Let's talk to Ben Habib, uh, former MEP, of course. Um, a shocking ruling there, Ben. It looks as though uh, the working man and woman of this country uh, is not supported by the judiciary uh, and we just have to continue to pay through the nose to do things which are part of everyday life. A very sad result from that court case. It came, it flashed up on my phone as I was waiting to speak to you, Mike, and I can't tell you how disappointed I was. I was so pleased in the first instance that these five boroughs have got together and challenged Sadiq, who, by the way, has lied through his teeth when he says that the outer boroughs, uh, clean air, or the, the, the quality of air in the outer boroughs needed to be cleaned up. You know, the TFL produces it's a dynamic map. Anyone can click on it right now as they're listening to me. There's a TFL map that shows the quality of air right across all these boroughs. And if it's blue, if the map's blue, the air is clean. And if it's very dark kind of orange, it's bad. And virtually none of London is dark orange. Mm. Even the central parts are pretty close to yellow. And as you get out, I get, get outside the immediate... Um, center of London, it goes blue very quickly. This is not uh, a move towards cleaning up the air of London. This is just another tax levied by a Labour mayor on the working and middle classes of London. It's because he's inept at running the finances of the mayoralty. He needs access to further money because he's run TfL and everything else into the ground. And he's being allowed to get away with it. Frankly, the government should step in. Of course, they won't do what I'm about to say, mm. but they should step in, abolish the mayor of London and take back control of London to central government. In fact, abolish all the mayoralties yeah. right across the country. And while they're at it, abolish the devolved authorities, get rid of Holyrood, <laughs> get rid of the Welsh <laughs> Assembly, get rid of Stormont. Yeah. Bring it all back to West I can well, see, I can see, West. I can see that you're on a roll, Ben. But I can't disagree with you because, quite frankly, ever since the brilliant uh, Tony Blair government decided that that devolution was the way forward because that would stop nationalism, um, and it's completely backfired. Uh, it's completely turned, it's turned London uh, into a sewer. Quite frankly, I've written a piece of Telegraph just last night uh, talking about how Sadiq Khan is destroying London. The SNP, he is destroying the it. SNP are destroying Scotland. Uh, the Stormont Parliament can barely meet for five minutes before they all start chucking oranges at each other uh, and, and, and walk out of the room. Uh, the Welsh Assembly is a joke. They now renamed it the Senedd uh, and it's full of complete planks. Uh, you're absolutely right. Andy Burnham, another failure in Manchester. You know, what is the point of all of this? And quite frankly, what is the, point? the ordinary people of London are sick to death of Sadiq Khan. And not only is his ULES plan simply a means of making money, it's got nothing to do with air pollution because he's actually saying to people, I don't care if you pollute the air, just as long as you pay me to to do so absolutely absolutely as long as he's being paid he couldn't care less and think of the cost mike mm. of all these various devolved authorities mayoralties right. and all the infrastructure and the bureaucracy that goes with them and all the extra taxes we have to pay to keep these monkeys in office and because these monkeys don't have a proper job all they do is promote woke nonsense mm. promote this drive towards net zero wrap themselves in virtue signaling blankets try and insulate themselves from criticism and sit there taking big salaries doing close to nothing other than damaging the yeah. uh, damaging the areas of which they're meant to be in charge and you know it's, the whole thing's a nightmare it, it, i can't tell you how depressed i was to see that High court ruling flash out. Yeah, no, it's, I know. It's a really well, big I was, in, I was, in, I was in Scotland working when they decided to, to build the Scottish Parliament. And the first thing they did, of course, was to order a load of windows at the charge of something like 400,000 quid. And they were all the wrong size. They then built another entire building down in Leith to house 3,500 civil servants who had to be hired in order to make the devolution uh, well, project work. It's amount of money going going south out of the taxpayers' absurd. pocket is ludicrous. And quite frankly, ludicrous. you know, we need to do something. I mean, yesterday uh, we learned that British Gas is literally ripping off its customers to the tune uh, of a billion pounds worth of profit in six months alone, including the amount of money the government is giving them uh, to supposedly subsidise other people's gas bills. We've got the asylum uh, barge being opened up supposedly for the first time today, which is going to house 500 asylum seekers who basically can come here overnight because that's how many people are coming. You know, we've got Coots, the bank, uh, basically 
actually uh, shopping their own customers uh, and 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 cancelling bank accounts because they don't like your policies. Yeah. I mean, what on Turning earth is going? Away, this country has gone going to going the dogs. I'm sorry. We have what 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 all of this is, Mike. All of it can be traced back to woke. I, I know that sounds absurd. No, it doesn't. All of it is it, all of it is traceable back to the promotion of this drive to net zero, mm. the promotion of ethnic minority. Uh, ethnic minorities at the exclusion of the ethnic majority, yeah. a complete collapse in the belief of borders, this notion that immigration, unbridled immigration, is the enlightened way forward. We should all love everyone across the globe and welcome them into our country no matter how they get here. Um, it's just terrible. And it's all an attack on the United Kingdom. It is an attack on our values. It's an attack on our heritage. It's an attack on our self-confidence. It's an attack on the on the very integrity of the United Kingdom, as we've now seen with Northern Ireland being left in the EU. And we have a political class that is just sitting back and allowing all this to happen. It is an absolute abomination. And you mentioned the barge. The barge is going to be a symbol of dystopia mm. in the United Kingdom. The weather field, air, the weather field, airfield where they've got 1,700 migrants, tuberculosis has just broken out. Oh, Another great. scene of dystopia. Uh, Suella Braverman's bought tents now to house these illegal migrants. Right. Uh, that's going to be another dystopic creation in the United mm. Kingdom. We've got a government that has borrowed more money than it can afford. It, it, it's taxing us to the hilt, highest taxes since World War II. The public services are broken. We're, and, and we've got all these massive expenditures which are entirely unnecessary. This drive towards net zero manifesting itself in ULES, businesses having to pay much more to comply with these regulations, properties having to be upgraded for no damn good reason, and all of us being effectively, I mean, I want to use a four-letter word, but having, you know, a <laughs> huge amount of proverbial nonsense. I know. Um, I know. It's very difficult. Heads. I tell you what, every, with each uh, uh, sort of onward-looking day, I find it more and more difficult not to swear uh, on television. Because let's face it, the biggest problem that nobody will ever address in this country is the huge surge in population brought on by both uh, legal and illegal immigration. 1.2 million people coming here in 2022. You know, something like 40,000 people coming last year illegally on boats. We'll have another 50,000 this year. There's no houses for people. There's no doctors yeah. for people. People. There's no space on the roads. The trains don't work. You know they have to stop these people coming instead they of encouraging them to, the lie, to continue. Let's just expose another lie while we're while, while we're at it. They say that we need this immigration because we can't cost effectively fill. Uh, you know, but what happens when these people come in? There's the demand on housing, demand on the NHS, demand on schools, demand on other infrastructure. All of that is inflationary. Yeah. All of that adds to the cost. Of maintaining the United Kingdom. Yeah. What also, we've, we've got. got, we've got it, by the way, we've got enough uh, people driving around on scooters delivering food to people's houses. We don't need any more, thanks. And I mean, if that's the, the answer to the unemployment problem, I'm sorry, we're already full. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is ridiculous. It's lamentable, frankly. And this notion that Brits aren't prepared to get up off their backsides and work is daft. What we need to do is create a tax structure and a benefit structure that motivates people back into work. Mm. You know, we've, it's got to pay to work. We've got 5.9 million people on universal credit, 2.5 million people cr claiming mental health issues, not working. Can you imagine 2.5 million people? I mean, we hadn't heard of mental health in the 1980s, but now it is the biggest, uh, d you know, the biggest impact uh, on the, on the labour market. And, of course, the minute you claim that you've got a mental health issue, your employer can't challenge you. You've somehow protected, again, in this blanket of virtue. And I, I just don't know where this country is going. It's like there's a willful aim to destroy the economy, destroy, as I mentioned, our national identity, our self-belief, our values. Winston Churchill's a white supremacist, apparently. We were culpable of uh, making all our money through the uh, slave trade, even though it was us that abolished slavery. Um, and spent a huge amount of money, by the way, in the 19th century combating slavery worldwide. Yeah. You know, all of this, I, 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 there's so much that is going wrong at the moment that, as you say, it's difficult to get through a day without putting your own hair out.
It really is extraordinary how quickly things seem to have kind of dissipated into complete and utter collapse, because that's what it feels like now. It feels as though you can't get a train anywhere because you never know if they're actually going to be running. The doctors are going on strike. Um, you know, you've got hopelessness all over the place. You've got the BBC lying to its viewers and listeners. You know, the once great yeah. hallowed uh, media organisation uh, is obsessed now with climate change. You've got the banking system, as you say, uh, thanks to the wokists and the bloody Stonewall uh, directory, uh, judging you based on whether or not uh, you've got right-wing views or left-wing views or whatever sort of yeah. views you've got. It's absolutely extraordinary. And meanwhile, the people who are running the companies of this country are getting richer and richer and richer and just charging us more and more money for everything. It, 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 it's terrible direction we're in. So it's no wonder that the economy is stagnant it's no wonder that productivity is through the floor. It's no wonder that wages can't keep up with inflation. It's no wonder that we can't control inflation itself, that it's embedded in our system. Um, you know, I can't see any resolution to this unless the government absolutely gets a grip of its own self. Mm. It needs to understand that it's got to, first of all, put British national interest first, stop looking at the globe for its its policies, start thinking about what the UK needs, number one. Number two, ditch this drive to net zero, extract gas from the North Sea, extract oil from the, from the North Sea, make it available cheaply to British customers and British businesses. Number three, ditch the entire um, woke agenda out of business. Businesses are not the guardians of moral correctitude. Businesses should not be obliged to be checking whether Nigel Farage is worthy of a bank account or not. Businesses should have one aim, which is to make profits for their shareholders. No, that's number three. Number four, deregulate. Number five, cut taxes on the working and middle classes. Get people back into work. Number seven, cut benefits so that people are motivated back into work. You know, there's so... It, the, I can make the list in about 15 yeah. minutes, but the government just isn't doing any of that no it's sitting back highly regulating us highly taxing us and then just hoping praying crossing its fingers and wishing that the economy will grow mm. and debt will automatically somehow come back under control it's not no you know? it's not going to happen because we're going into more and more debt as we spend more and more money and we give more and more money away you know, we've got money for Ukraine. We've got money uh, to subsidise the uh, the uh, f facilities in the water companies. We've got money for... Do you know, we gave £725 million pounds to the rail operating companies uh, back in 2021 because of yeah. furlough. I mean, £725 million To do what? To run a load of empty trains uh, run by a load of people, you know, the sort of gangsters of the trade unions pretending that they couldn't go to work because they had COVID. Yeah, extraordinary. And let's just take Ukraine for a second. We've got this intractable war down in the southeast of Ukraine. We're told daily by the government that our woes are in significant part as a result of Ukraine. The indirect cost of Ukraine, according to go the government, is that the inflation took off, that energy costs went through the roof. So why is the government spending two and a half billion a year supporting that war? Why, why aren't they putting pressure on Zelensky to settle with the Russians? Why are we supporting an intractable war which we can't afford that's hitting us directly in our pockets with the, uh, w with the contribution that we have to make to the war effort, but indirectly by holding the economy back? Why? Why? Also, hang on. If the war, if the war in Ukraine this? is costing so much money to the energy market, how is British Gas making a billion pounds of profit in the first six months of this yeah. year? Well, sadly, a lot of that billion pounds is straight from the exchequer. Again, it's the taxpayer paying British gas, which, by the way, doesn't extract gas from the North Sea. All British gas does is buy gas from the producers of gas and then distribute it to us. It's a glorified broker. And in order to prevent them from going bust, the government gave them, uh, were going bust with the price caps that were put on energy for the consumers. The government came to their rescue and paid them a huge amount of cash. The government, of course, being us. Mm. It's us, the taxpayer. And so that's another inflationary burden on the British taxpayer. I mean, you could, you, you know, you can literally sit down. You gave me 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. I could list every single ill that needs to be addressed. And it should be self-evident to Rishi Sunak what he needs to do. But he won't because he's hijacked by the 
virtue signaling nonsense from which he takes personal self-validation on the global stage. And at the heart of that, and at the heart of it, and again, it's going to sound stupid, but at the heart of that is woke, this complete hijacking of the United Kingdom by woke. It is woke that requires businesses to uh, deliver social justice and is putting burdens on us that we can't cope with. It is woke that tells us that the United Kingdom um, dabbled in the slave trade and we should now be ashamed of ourselves. It's woke that informs the Church of England that it should be putting 100 million aside to, uh, to for reparations for that slave trade, of which no one, by the way, none of, none of the people who suffered from it are alive. It's woke that does the same thing to, for King Charles. It's woke that uh, informs that St. Paul's Cathedral, that Winston Churchill was a white supremacist. It's woke that allows Hamza Youssef to get up in the Holyrood and say there are too many white people in office. It's woke that allows Sadi Khan to wrap himself up in this net zero virtue signaling blanket and tax the working and middle classes of London, £12.50 to use their cars. It's woke that effectively prevents us from championing the ethnic uh, majority of the United Kingdom. It's woke that prevents us from being a meritocratic society, promoting all these minor issues at the expense of the, uh, uh, of the majority. It's woke, woke, woke everywhere. We are being hijacked by it and it's got to stop. It really has. Ben, brilliant speech. Thank you so much.